Do you believe that a human being can be raised by animals? If not, watch this video because the children in this video are real-life Tarzan or Mowgli. Unfortunately, these children didn't even realize that they were human until someone found them. But some of them said that after getting to know humans, they realized that true peace is not with humans, but with animals. Oksana Malaya, the girl raised by dogs. Oksana was born in 1983 in Ukraine to an alcoholic family. By the time she was three years old, one night her parents were so intoxicated from drinking and substance abuse that they didn't realize the little girl had been locked out and they locked the door and fell asleep. According to some sources, her parents deliberately left her outside because she was crying so much. Feeling very cold, the girl used her survival instincts and crawled to a dog kennel on a nearby farm. Interestingly, the dogs in the neighborhood were wild dogs that lived far away from humans, but they took Oksana in. As if their daughter's disappearance wasn't enough, instead of looking for her, her family moved to another place, so no one ever heard of Oksana. As a member of a pack of dogs, the little girl ate raw meat and drank contaminated water just like them. The bacteria in these foods were dangerous enough to cause serious harm to a normal human being, but the girl, whose only bad luck was her family, was lucky in everything else. She barked like a dog, ran on all fours, did not use her hands when eating and cleaned herself like them. This situation continued for five years. One day, a couple passing by noticed something unusual in the kennel, a wild baby girl. They immediately notified the authorities. In 1991, when Oksana was eight years old, she was captured by the authorities with difficulty and taken to hospital. She even tried to prevent her captors from taking her away by barking and growling. At the hospital, the necessary checks were carried out. The little girl's bone and muscle development was different because she was growing and developing like a dog. Especially her knees were hard and calloused compared to normal because she ran and walked by bending her wrists. These joints were much more flexible than normal people, but physically there seemed to be no irreversible situation. The real problem was the girl's psychology. After weeks of therapy, doctors were able to establish near-normal communication with Oksana. At the age of three, her ability to speak human language was an important factor in this recovery. When the authorities could not find her parents, custody was transferred to the state, and Oksana was placed in a home for mentally disabled children. Here, her social and behavioral education continued for years. Today, at the age of 41, Oksana Malaya has only the social skills of a child, despite years of treatment. Although her doctors said she was unlikely to make a full recovery, Oksana was aware of what she was going through and was upset when she was called dog woman or wild girl. Because she wanted people to treat her like a normal girl, she had a sense of humor and enjoyed being the center of attention. However, she was more masculine when she walked and rough when she joked. Also. When she was given something, she immediately hid it somewhere. She could count from one to ten, but could not learn addition and subtraction, and could not spell her name correctly. Now Oksana lives on a state-protected farm in rural Odessa. She spends time with the animals and has a deep affection for them. Surprisingly, she even has a boyfriend who lives on the same farm and is in a happy relationship. Another interesting fact is that when people ask her how she communicated with dogs when she was a child, Oksana replies that it was enough to make eye contact. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for this kind of interesting topics and help us reach more people by liking our video. Marcos Rodriguez Pantoja, Werewolf Born in 1946 in a village in Andalusia, Marcos Rodriguez was one of three sons of Melkor and Araceli. Marcos's mother died with the baby when she gave birth to a new sibling. When his mother died, his father sold him into slavery to a rich man to escape with another woman. Anthropologist Julian Pitt Rivers notes that selling children was common practice in 1950s Andalusia due to the difficult living conditions. The man who bought Marcos owned extensive land at the foot of Spain's Sierra Morena Mountains and entrusted him to his own goat herder to be a shepherd. When the goat herd died suddenly, little Marcos was left alone in the mountains for 12 years. During those days, he started looking for food to survive and found a cave with wolf cubs. He got so tired playing with the cubs that he fell asleep next to them. When he woke up,
the mother wolf had brought food for her cubs and was looking at him angrily. Frightened by these stares, Marcos backed away and the mother wolf pushed a piece of meat in front of him with her nose. From that day on, Marcos became part of them. For 12 years, he slept with them, fed with them, and learned to survive like them. One day, Marcos Rodriguez was eating fruit by himself when he came across three men walking in the woods. Although he tried to run away from them, the men grabbed him, tied his hands tightly, and took him first to the barber shop and then to prison. The officers found Marcos's father, Melchor Rodriguez, and brought him to his son. Instead of consoling and pining for his son, the father began to ask him strange questions. Then, when he wouldn't take him in, two shepherds took poor 19-year-old Marcos in. During their time together, the shepherds taught the young man to speak normally, eat normally, and behave normally. Rodriguez enlisted in the army in 1967, but during training, he almost caused the death of a soldier, so he was discharged and started working in construction in Madrid. Because of his lack of insight into people, he was repeatedly deceived and swindled. Finally, he met Manuel Barandela, a retired policeman, and they became very good friends. After this friendship, things got better, and they lived the rest of their lives together in peace and quiet. A movie called Entre Lobos was made about Marcos's life, and several books were written, but all this did not bring him much. Marcos said, People still keep coming. Some of them think I am rich and want to exploit me, but I don't have a single penny. Most of them have the same goal. We should fear these deceitful people more than the wild animals we perceive, Marco says. Kamala and Kamala, wolf sisters. In 1920, in Bengal, India, a man named Singh saw a female wolf and her long-haired, human-looking cubs. Studying the cubs carefully, the man realized that they were quite different from wolves and decided to kidnap them both. Soon the man, together with some villagers he had brought with him, planned to kill the mother wolf first in order to kidnap the cubs. Because the mother wolf protected her cubs with her maternal instinct and wouldn't let anyone near them, the two children captured after the wolf was killed were named Amala and Kamala by Singh. One of these girls was eight years old and the other was one and a half years old. After some time in the orphanage, the brothers continued to behave strangely and to act in ways they had learned from the wolves. Both did not sleep at night and made wolf-like noises. In other words, apart from being human, their behavior and diet were identical to wolves. Because of this behavior, Singh made great efforts to socialize the girls with other children in the orphanage. However, Amala and Kamala could not adapt to the other children. The girls were educated for a while, but soon began to show signs of illness. As a result, the younger sister Amala died in 1921. Kamala, almost acclimatized to the orphanage environment, continued to show cognitive skills in the following years. She learned the names of some of the children there, began to understand the concept of color, and became accustomed to eating from a plate and drinking from a glass. Kamala and Singh's fame soon spread around the world. In 1928, the New York Psychological Society offered to take Kamala to the U.S. and put her on public display, but the offer was rejected. Kamala, like her sister, had begun to weaken. Her health deteriorated steadily for a year, and despite Singh's best efforts, Kamala did not recover and passed away in November 1929, eight years after her sister. Sadly, this story ended as badly as it began. Marina Chapman, that woman raised by apes. Marina Chapman's story begins when she was kidnapped while playing in a small village in Colombia in the 1950s. Knocked unconscious and kidnapped by two men, Chapman finds herself abandoned in the Colombian rainforest. As he wanders through the jungle, alone and confused, he encounters capuchin monkeys. At first, the monkeys don't take to him, but Chapman learns to survive by observing their behavior. One day, when he gets a bad case of food poisoning, a monkey he calls Grandpa helps him, and the monkeys accept him into their midst. Chapman learns from the monkeys how to climb trees, eat healthy, and take care of himself. By the way, Marina herself tells the whole story and says she remembers everything well. At the age of 10, Chapman approaches a group of hunters longing for humans. 
but the hunters capture him and sell him to a brothel. Chapman manages to escape from the brothel and goes to the city of Kukuta, where he is enslaved by an organized crime family. One day he manages to escape again and is adopted by another couple. Her new family gives her the name Marina. When Marina becomes an adult, she meets a man named John in church and decides to marry him. Finally, they both move to England, and Marina's story has a happy ending. This story would make a great TV series, wouldn't it? Marina's story has caused great controversy among researchers and psychologists. Some say the story is too incredible to be true and is an example of false memory syndrome. Others argue that everything she says is possible if you put everything in order, but neither side can come to a definitive conclusion. Yes, the story was told by Marina herself, so it is normal not to believe it. But as for whether it is possible or not, I think, why is it possible for a human being raised by wolves, but not a human being raised by monkeys? And what do you think? I have only mentioned four cases to keep the video short, but if you search, you will find many more cases of this kind. Animals may not be as smart and logical as we are, but believe me, they are not as harmful as human harm. I hope these cases will help us to better understand why we should always show compassion to animals.